Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane. This video is part of my franchise series, and today we're going to be talking about Halo. Okay, so first person shooters have always been one of my favorite games, uh, one of my favorite kind of genres. Um, Ever since playing the original Wolfenstein on my dad's Magnavox uh, 486 uh, and, and playing um, Doom and, and stuff like that, I've always really, really loved first-person shooters. And then uh, everything turned upside down in the video game world. And uh, Microsoft decided to enter the ring and they wanted to basically challenge everybody, which I thought was great. I, I absolutely loved it. And not only did they want to challenge everyone in console, but they decided to take on first-person shooters, and they came out with the Halo series. Now, I love Doom, and I love Wolfenstein, and I love all of these older games and stuff. Um, I haven't really played too much of the, of, uh, the newer stuff those series but what halo brought to the table and i think they really kind of brought it to the table first was a first person shooter where the story was was a uh, very in focus very centralized to the entire experience of playing the game and i was one of the first people to get my hands on a original xbox and I got Halo 1. Um, it was released in 2001 by Bungie and uh, Microsoft. I think, yeah, I think Microsoft had their name on it too. Um, and it was great. It was phenomenal. You could change out weapons. You had normal grenades. You had sticky grenades. You had all of these things. You had enemies that squealed and made you laugh when you blew them up. And it was great. Um, now, this whole video isn't going to be, like, a full, in-depth thing every single Halo. It's mainly just a bird's-eye view of the entire series. I'm going to definitely go back and try to do, uh, you know, some, some more uh, in-depth dives on each and every one of these games. Um, I'm not really going through them in any particular order, either, other than the order that my... Uh, I have an app that uses that I use to track all of my games, and that's basically the order I'm using is the order that the app kept them in. So yeah, Halo One was great, innovative, everything else. Um, Halo Two, and when Halo Two hit, uh, not only did it hit hard, but it it hit in such an awkward way. Um, guys, I don't know if you remember this back in 2004, again by Bungie and Microsoft. Um, there were stores that were breaking street day, and they weren't breaking street date a little bit. They were breaking street day a lot. They broke street date by like four or five days, uh, and like, and it was really odd. Like some of the WalMarts were doing it and stuff like that, and suddenly, as soon as that happened, all of the other stores started doing it because, you know, you can get your game four days early from Walmart. So yeah, you went to Electronics Boutique and you canceled your pre-order to get your money back so that you could have your game four or five days early. Uh, and so that just started this huge floodgate of, of things. But Halo 2, I mean, the big thing, not only was it just a story on that one as well, was uh, being able to dual wield weapons. That was just absolutely just an epic thing. Um, and then in 2007, Halo 3 came along and Microsoft, again, just starts raising the bar on like, you know, high stakes storyline, epic, you're the hero and no one else can do it but you and everything. And it's, it's great. Um, and we're going to skip over a few and go to Halo 4, released in 2012, Microsoft. This was the first 343 Industries, I believe, uh, the, th the first 343 game. And I'm not going to say that it was bad, um, but 
people noticed a change. Uh, I didn't mind Halo 4 too much. Um, my skill set, I'm good enough to get through campaigns and have fun. I am not at a competitive level on first-person shooters, um, and I've basically just been that way my whole life. But Halo 4, you know, great game. I enjoyed it quite a bit, uh, you know, but some people just argue that 343 Industries was, you know, the beginning of the decline. Halo 5, uh, okay, released in 2015, uh, Microsoft 343, uh, on the Xbox One. I love the voice actors. I absolutely do. Um, but I could tell that this game was created with online multiplayer in mind first. And the story and everything was a secondary thought. Um, so now we're going to move on to my favorite Halo, which is Halo 3 ODST. Released 2009 by Microsoft. Um, it's one. It's, it's like the only one of the only games where you're not playing as Spark, and you have that disadvantage. You have, uh, you have to rely on stealth. You have to rely on a very uh, small scope of of uh, weapons and running out of ammo and. Um, Speaking of small scope, the the story was very very tightly woven and and not a grand story. It was you know it was about your squad and this little microcosm that was just great. Um, it's, like I said, it's it's my favorite. Um, people have even said that it's the survival horror of the Halo series. Um, I don't mind. Well, like I said, it was just, it, it is still to this day my favorite. Uh, next up, we're going to talk about Halo Reach, in uh, released 2010 by Microsoft. Uh, other than Halo 3 ODST, Halo Reach was actually probably my most played game. Uh, I love games that delve backwards into origin and lore and stuff like that, and, and Halo Reach gave that to me. Um, and, you know, it's just, I spent a lot of time, uh, customizing my Spartan and getting the helmet that I wanted and doing this and doing that and doing the daily missions just to customize uh, all of the things. And it really even didn't mean too terribly much because, like I said, I'm not very good at multiplayer, but I still wanted to customize my character that much. Um. So we're going to move on to the Halo Wars series. The first Halo Wars was released in 2009 by Microsoft and Ensemble. Um, I liked it, um, but I also liked Doom 2000 and various other games in the same genre. And uh, just to have the Halo series doing it where you have the various levels of troops and you can get Spartans and, and stuff like that, and just being able to see the Halo world um, on a little bit of a larger scale, is kind of exciting for me. Um, and the same thing goes for Halo Wars 2, uh, where you're still fighting against the Covenant. Um, you know, in, in 2017, they released this game on the Xbox One, and they're still, you know, you're still fighting against the Covenant, and it's still got this very individualized story. Um, Microsoft and 343, I think they did a great job. Um, you know, it's... It's just a good addition to everything. Um, and then Halo decided to branch out in yet another area, which was the twin stick shooters. Of course, I'm speaking of uh, Halo Spartan Assault and Halo Spartan Strike. Uh, Assault was released in 2013. Strike was released in 2015, uh, both by Microsoft and 343. Uh, again, this, this is... Um, I kind of like twin stick shooters. I've, I've always liked them since like the original Gauntlet, although that doesn't really classify as one. Um, but it feels in the same vein for me. Uh, but again, it goes back to this like let's let's go back and tell some of the backstory of the original Halo, and and how we got to this point, how 
how we have uh, had multiple Spartans and stuff and, you know, their histories and what they went through and stuff like that. And I've always loved just being able to look back into previous lore that was kind of shrouded in mystery and stuff and just seeing the origin of things. Um, and they do a great job with that. And uh, again, you know, even though it's not a first person shooter, it's a twin stick shooter. They did a great job. You can still recognize the weapons. They still have their firing, normal firing patterns and stuff like that. Um, you can still recognize the enemies. You can still have the enemies that make you laugh when you blow them up. And it's great. It's just all a wonderful experience. Now, like I said, this is a big, high in the sky, eagle eye overview of the entire series and how it's just made an impression on me and um, influenced what I've come to expect from certain games and stuff like that. And it's just a great and wonderful experience for me. And I don't think it's a series that anyone should really skip. Well, that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. I have videos on the 1st and 15th of every month, and look forward to sharing them with you. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.